The search and recovery of that missing Canadian military helicopter and the remains of the forces members on board is now over. The Cyclone helicopter went down on April 29th off the coast of Greece, killing all six Canadian service members on board. It was involved in a photo shoot and was returning to land on HMCS Fredericton when it went down. Witnesses from the ship were able to help pinpoint the location of the wreckage 3,000 meters under the water. The military says no portion of the main cabin was left intact. Pieces of the helicopter were found in clusters over a large debris field. Some human remains were also recovered. While we were able to recover remains of some of our fallen, it is important to note that we have not yet identified these remains, and I cannot tell you whether we have found everyone. The remains will be returned to Canada this weekend for forensic identification. Family will be notified of the findings first and then the public. Investigators are still piecing together what went wrong. Hundreds of soldiers are deployed here at home working in long-term care homes and thousands of others are waiting. Because of the pandemic, they've been told to stay home and stay healthy. Now, after months, the Canadian Armed Forces says it needs to get them moving or they risk losing some of their essential skills. Mercedes Stevenson explains. COVID-19 ground the Canadian military machine to a halt for all but the most vital of national defence and overseas operations. Troops ordered out of the field and off of the rifle ranges, all to stop the invisible enemy of the novel coronavirus from spreading within the military and taking out the troops. But after months of only patrolling as far as their backyards, concerns about losing operational readiness and becoming combat ineffective are driving the military back to work. An internal military memo obtained by Global News documents the concerns, saying it's time to come back to work despite the threat of the pandemic because the military's capacity has been progressively eroded by the cancellation of Canadian Armed Forces training and force generation activities and that the forces need to get back on track in order to prevent the excessive erosion of Canadian Armed Forces readiness. A senior military official told Global News the military is planning a slow, phased approach to getting back in the saddle. The first activities to resume will be recruiting, individual training and battle school courses to teach trades and skills. Troops will be required to be two metres apart at all times, and if that's not possible, to wear personal protective equipment. Canadian military aircraft will be used to fly troops in where possible. And as personnel return to bases, they'll have to self-isolate for two weeks with no contact with civilians to make sure they don't have COVID-19. Defence analyst David Perry says the military has to reactivate because of the nature of their jobs. There's simply too many things that the military does that you can't do from your, your home office or your kitchen. Um, training, uh, things like firearms training, pretty difficult to do in your living room. Um, there's all kinds of aspects of the way that the military works as an organization that requires you to be in an actual facility. Donna, June 1st has always been the deadline that the military knew they had to come back because after that they risked compromising their ability to be able to defend the country or operate overseas. One of their first priorities will be making sure that those who are about to ship out have completed their training. Mercedes, what about the soldiers working in the long-term care homes in Quebec and Ontario, overwhelmed by COVID-19? Do we know how many have tested positive? We know that 41 overall have tested positive, but here's an important fact with that number. They've only tested those who are symptomatic, so we don't know the total numbers. But here's a bit of the breakdown from numbers we do have from the Department of National Defence. In Quebec, 1,000 Canadian soldiers are working in long-term care homes. 26 of them have been diagnosed. That gives you an infection rate of 2.6%. In Ontario, the numbers are much higher in terms of percentage. While there are only 150 troops in the homes, 15 have been diagnosed with COVID-19, and that is a 10% infection rate. The good news here, Donna, is that most of those soldiers have recovered. All right, Mercedes Stevenson in Ottawa, thank you.